Hello everyone, I want to welcome you to today's webinar titled Nicolay IS-5 Microspectroscopy with the Surveyor. Thank you for tuning in to hear about this novel accessory from Zytec. My name is Matt Gunlock and I am an FTIR product manager here at Thermo Fisher Scientific. Specifically, I work with and manage the Nicolay IS-5, Nicolay IS-10 and our accessory product line. And I'm very happy to welcome Dr. David W. Shearing as my guest for today's webinar. Dr. Shearing is a founder and principal of Zytec, a small company dedicated to the development of marketing of vibrational spectroscopy products. He has more than 30 years of experience in the business of instrumentation for chemical measurements. Prior to Zytec, he held numerous roles in management, science and technology, product development and product management at Smith Detection, Sensor Technologies, Thermo Electron Corp and Perkin-Elmer. Dr. Shearing, who has authored more than 25 publications on various aspects of vibrational spectroscopy, holds a PhD in analytical chemistry from Miami University, where he is also an adjunct assistant professor. He has served the Koblenz Society, which is a vibrational spectroscopy professional community, as a member of the board of managers and as secretary from 1991 to 2010. In 2011, he was made an honorary member of the Koblenz Society for his service. As you can tell, he is an extremely qualified individual with an extensive background in spectroscopy, and I'm very excited to have him with me today. Dr. Shearing will walk you through a majority of the presentation on Zytec's Surveyor Microspectroscopy Accessory. I will jump back on towards the end of the webinar to wrap up the presentation and ask Dr. Shearing some of our most common customer questions regarding the product and its applications. If you have any additional questions that aren't answered at that time, Dr. Shearing and I will share our contact information and you're more than welcome to reach out to us in that way as well. So with that being said, I think I've covered everything I need to. Let's go ahead and begin. Dr. Shearing, I will turn it over to you. Thank you very much, Matt, for that introduction and allowing us to come in and tell you about a very new product and new technology surveyor. We're going to be talking to you today about infrared spectroscopy and FTIR microspectroscopy, excuse me, as an introductory uh, part of our agenda. Next, we'll tell you about surveyor its design and features and configurations. We'll then present to you some example applications of Surveyor in the area of product defect analysis and in art conservation paint analysis. Lastly, as Matt has indicated, we'll have some time for concluding remarks and some questions. So, Infrared microspectroscopy, what can it tell me? First, we'll start off with a brief introduction of infrared spectroscopy. So, infrared spectroscopy con is concerned with the interaction of infrared electromagnetic radiation with molecules. When the frequency of infrared radiation matches a fundamental mode of vibration in a molecule, the infrared light is absorbed and the molecule vibrates with increased amplitude, leading to the observation of absorption bands in the spectrum. On the upper right hand side, we see an absorption spectrum of water with two prominent features, one around 3400 wave numbers, the other around 1600 wave numbers, corresponding to OH oxygen hydrogen stretching and bending. This is how we observe the absorption of light at fundamental vibrational frequencies in spectra. The infrared spectrum is very specific. It is a molecular fingerprint uh, of a molecule and we can identify unknown samples by searching against libraries of spectra of known materials. Microspectroscopy extends FTIR spectroscopy into the micro domain. So in infrared spectroscopy, we measure mass on the scale of milligrams and length on the scale of millimeters. 
and infrared spectroscopy is a bulk method. By coupling beam condensing optics and sample isolation optics, we can extend spectroscopy into the micro domain where we measure mass on the scale of picograms and we measure length on the scale of micrometers. Microspectroscopy is a micro method. So when is microspectroscopy used or when is it useful? With microspectroscopy we have a very powerful system in that we can isolate areas of samples that we observe microscopically mi with a microscope and target areas for infrared analysis. The, the image shown on the right hand side pictorially represents how this happens. So we have a sample with three different regions and we can target those different regions that we observe under the microscope and collect specific infrared spectra of this chemical contrast that we observe. Where is it useful? A big use of microspectroscopy is in defect or contaminant analysis, which is applicable to a very broad range of industries and com consumer products. We also can use microspectroscopy in authenticity and conservation. Microspectroscopy infrared microspectroscopy is, a, is as diverse in its applications as is infrared spectroscopy. So there are other applications such as criminal forensics, fiber analysis, and looking at contaminants on electronics components where we can apply infrared microspectroscopy. At this point we're going to talk about the specifics of Surveyor and how it's used in FTIR microspectroscopy applications. So Surveyor is different in that we believe it expands the applications of infrared microspectroscopy into areas uh, where spec in microspectroscopy has not specifically been used. Traditional FTIR microscopes are used in specialized labs on most occasions. This is due to relatively high cost and user skill required to effectively use those systems. Surveyor allows you to move the identification of an unknown closer to the problem and we'll talk in more detail how we're able to do that. Surveyor is affordable, it's easy to use, and it works on any Thermo Nicolay FTIR. It will open up new areas for IR, IR microspectroscopy getting the solution closer to the problem, including in the quality control laboratories, incoming materials lab, and closer to a process or factory floor. Because of the compact nature of spectrometers and surveyor, we can take the surveyor FTIR microspectroscopy system out into the field and use it in portable or transportable applications. Surveyor is a routine instrument for routine microanalysis. We believe that Surveyor is a very easy to use system, but yet very powerful. There is minimal setup. You could be ready to measure samples within seconds. It has a very simple, repeatable measurement procedure you're ensured that the infrared and visible are parfocal, meaning that the focus of the infrared interrogation area is at the same spot as the visible area you're observing. There's a single objective. There's no switching between IR and visible object objectives. It has a large depth of field, which even when the sample is not in focus, you're able to observe surface features and quickly bring the sample into focus. Also, there's a large field of view, so you're not, you're not viewing the needle or experiencing the needle in a haystack issue. So we can locate the sample very quickly and focus it and analyze it. So, 
Surveyor comes in a couple of configurations available through Thermo Fisher for the IS-5 spectrometer. There is a reflection only configuration and a configuration with reflection and transmission infrared. To both of these configurations you can add attenuated total reflection or ATR. Surveyor is a modern video microscopy system that implements megapixel video camera technology in a digitized digital format. All communication with the instrument is through a USB which also provides the power. We have computer controlled masks which define the infrared area of interest. It's user installed into the sample compartment and is, a, is compact and relatively low weight. With Surveyor, we're able to image specimens through the diamond ATR element. And as you can see in this image of sucrose crystals illuminated obliquely, the image quality through the diamond ATR element is very high. In this video sequence, we will demonstrate the use of the surveyor in analyzing an unknown crystal material using infrared spectroscopy. First, we locate the unknown, in this case a crystal, in the field of view, viewing through the diamond ATR element. We are viewing the sample in oblique illumination, which is especially useful for contrasting these kinds of samples. However, we will switch to transmitted light illumination that will allow us to visualize the contact of the specimen with the surface of the ATR element. Prior to collecting the infrared data, we set up the Omnic software in preview mode. This allows us to also observe in real time the, the, the spectral contrast when the specimen contacts the ATR. We are now bringing the crystal in contact with the surface of the diamond ATR element and we observe a wetting of the element with the sample. Weak bands initially are observed in the infrared spectrum. We optimize the contact using a force readout feature within the surveyor, the surveyor product as we make contact with the specimen. We see that the force is increasing. In looking at the spectral data, we also see that the band depths increase with contact and the spectral quality also is maximized. At this point, we're ready to initiate data collection. After we collect the data, we will search this unknown spectrum against a library of spectra of known materials to identify this unknown crystal. We see that the top match from the library is sucrose with a very high correlation. Sucrose is common table sugar. We now want to talk to you about a few examples of the application of Surveyor. First, we're going to talk about product defect analysis. As we mentioned before, product defect analysis is applicable to many, many different industries. Typically, a defect is not a problem unless it can be seen with the unaided human eye. And about the best that humans can see is about 50 microns. Many humans cannot see uh, sizes that small. So most visible defects are in this 100 micron to 200 micron uh, range uh, of size. And this is very well matched to surveyors capabilities when interfaced to a Nicolay IS-5 spectrometer. The typical workflow is that a spot 
is observed in a manufacturing process. Someone in the manufacturing operation uh, collects samples and submits them for analysis. The analyst determines whether the, the contamination, the defect, is on the surface or is it within the subsurface or below the surface of the product of interest. We can analyze both types of samples with surveyor, but the way that we approach them is slightly different. With a surface located spot, it is best to attempt to do the analysis with our diamond ATR, which is surface selective. And this minimizes sample preparation and also provides an easier to use analysis. Once we've collected the spectra, we try to match the spectra against library of, libraries of known materials and then identify the sample as we demonstrated in our video demonstration. On the other hand, if the sample is subsurface, we need to isolate it and remove it from the product. We put it on an infrared transmitting or reflecting substrate, roll it or press it thin, and then we either measure it uh, by transmission through an infrared transmitting window or by double pass reflection off of a low e-glass slide. We identify the unknown as we, as, we, as we discussed before. So what does the value proposition look like for product defect analysis? Product, defect an product defects cause financial losses to companies in two different ways. One is production downtime, which can be very significant in an automated process where literally tons of material are produced in a very short period of time. Another cost of, of low product quality is in consumer complaints, that it can affect uh, consumers buying product. So a quicker identification of the defect uh, yields faster resolution and a lower financial impact. Many large organizations are faced with backlog in their R&D or contract laboratories, which lead to a poor turnaround time uh, in terms of sample problem to identif identification of the defect. A solution is to move this microanalysis closer to the problem, either in a QC laboratory or a, a site laboratory uh, attached to the manufacturing floor. This solution is enabled by new and easy to use technology like Surveyor and the Nicolay IS-5, as well as Omnic software. The Surveyor can get your production line back operational quickly. We're going to show an example of a customer complaint first. In this example, it is a contamination on the surface of a pharmaceutical tablet. The upper left-hand image shows an unmagnified image of the contamination on a tablet. Bottom left illustrates this contamination magnified through the diamond ATR using oblique illumination on surveyor. The, camp, the contaminant, sh this, its spectrum shown in the upper right in blue, was identified as ethylene propylene copolymer, which is a typically used material for gaskets in manufacturing processes. On the bottom right, in the infrared spectrum, in red, we see the spectrum of the tablet coating. This is identified as hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose, or HPMC. An important fact relative to ATR is that it's surface selective. So we're able to measure the contaminant in the coating selectively without interrogating the pharmaceutical active ingredient in the tablet. The penetration in the ATR is on the order of one or two micrometers. And also, because of this fact, it allows us to measure contaminants in situ without sample preparation. 
This is an example of an embedded contaminant. So this was an engineered plastic. Uh, actually, it was a car bumper part that was injection molded, and many uh, visible defects were noted. On the upper left, we see a magnified image of the contaminant in the plastic. It it's hard to tell from this image, but it was embedded, was fairly easily excised, and the excised contaminant shown in the bottom left image. The habit of the contaminant was an oily, granular substance. The infrared spectrum of this defect measured in transmission through a potassium bromide window using a 160 micrometer aperture is shown at the top in purple. The major component of this contamination was silica gel. Silica gel is ubiquitous. It is a silicon dioxide material. And in this case, silica gel was used as an anti-caking agent in the production process. And it's believed that this anti-caking agent got into the process and contaminated the end product. Another pharmaceutical example customer complaint were suspended particles in an, injection, in an injectable pharmaceutical. On the upper left-hand corner, we observe one of these particles on filter paper from which the particles were filtered. So we see a white particle on the surface of a cellulose-based filter paper, imaged with oblique illumination again through the diamond ATR crystal. The spectrum of the contaminant is shown in red in the upper right, and it, it correlates very well to the spectrum of polytetrafluoroethylene, also known as Teflon, trademark Teflon. So the SEPTA material in the injectable drug was composed of Teflon, and it's believed that some of the SEPTA material contaminated the, uh, the uh, injectable pharmaceutical. Our next and last example for product defect analysis is a food additive, citric acid. Citric acid is a very, very common food additive. In this case, discoloration was observed in the powdered product. And in fact, in the image on the upper left, you can see some discolor discolorization of some of the crystals. Again, this is observed through the diamond ATR element using oblique illumination. A spectrum of the contamination with citric acid present is shown in the top. So we're seeing both the spectrum of the contaminant and the citric acid product. The contaminant was identified as hydraulic fluid, a reference spectrum shown in the blue on the bottom. It is believed that this hydraulic fluid came from a pump through a leaky seal in the manufacturing process, and that was the source of the contamination. In this particular example, there was a very large backlog of samples at the centralized R&D lab, and the user, the customer, uh, acquired the surveyor to do this analysis directly on the manufacturing floor near the process. The next area that we're going to talk about is the application of Surveyor in art, authenticity, and conservation. We should say that this application area has many, many similarities to other applications such as criminalistic forensics. Infrared microspectroscopy is a well-known technique in art conservation. However, it's mostly limited to larger museums due to its relatively high cost and complexity and user skill requirement. We believe Surveyor will provide an easy to use and affordable solution that will allow the application in smaller museums. 
Surveyor is a perfect complement to the Thermo IS-5 FTIR and also provides a level of portability, transportability, should you need to do these analyses very close to the artwork. In works of art, it's very important to examine or analyze these different types of samples. Paints, which include the pigments, the binders, the fillers, other coatings, protective coatings such as varnishes, printing, fibers, and polymers. Modern works of art, sculptures, many times employ polymers that will degrade over time thermally and uh, optically through uh, degra uh, photo degradation. So the conservator needs to know what the composition of the material is to properly conserve the polymer sculptures. It can be very difficult to transport or move works of art. Works of art are protected by the Hague Convention and museums and collections are reluctant to loan them. The Surveyor IS-5 combination allows the analysis of these works by transporting the analytical platform to the artwork rather than the artwork to the analytical platform. The workflow of these, of these conservation and authenticity analyses are, are shown in the middle of this slide. We want to measure, we want to analyze the, um, the components in a work of art and through utilize this analysis of the, analysis of the components to time date the artwork and confirm or, or, or detect, confirm authenticity or de detect a forgery. In terms of a degraded artifact, we want to analyze and identify the materials and contaminants and then map out a conservation strategy. In this example, we show the, the, the potential of determining the age of an artwork through chemical analysis. These are two different blue paints. One is a modern paint. One is a paint that, whose composition is, is consistent with an 18th century work of art. They're both blue, and as you can see from the visible images on the left, it, you would be hard pressed to differentiate these paints just based on microscopical observation. On the upper right, is a vegetable oil based paint in terms of the binder is a vegetable oil and the pigment is Prussian blue. Prussian blue is a fairy cyano compound its chemical formula shown on the slide with a very indicative absorption band near 2080 wave numbers due to the nitrile carbon nitrogen triple bond stretching. It's very descriptive of nitriles. A modern paint in the bottom is different in that most of the pigmentation is due to organic pigment pigments. So we don't see the, Prussian, the, the presence of Prussian blue. Secondly, the binder is a polymer, a, an acrylic polymer, not vegetable oil. So synthetic polymers were first used in paints in the 1950s. So a suspected artwork that, that where you detect polymeric binders but is being passed on as a painting from antiquity, you can determine the identity of your binder to determine whether you have a forgery. In the case of Prussian blue, Prussian blue was first synthesized in 1706. So if you see a painting purported to be older than 1706, but containing Prussian blue, that painting can also be a forgery. So as I said before, you can utilize the chemical analysis of paints to age artworks and determine authenticity. This slide shows the power of infrared mic microspectroscopy in actually analyzing paints and their components. 
This is the linseed linseed oil based paint that we showed in the previous example. However, it's a different paint chip, and you can see again the image of this paint chip observed through the diamond ATR. So we're able to identify without too much trouble three different components of this paint. The binder is linseed oil with its reference spectrum shown in the blue in the middle. The Prussian blue pigment which we indicated previously and then a filler which is calcium carbonate. So all of the chemical components that one identifies in a paint are important to its conservation. We also can readily identify fibers using Surveyor. In the image in the left, we see several fibers in the field of view observed under oblique illumination with the diamond ATR. By touching the fibers, we can selectively measure their spectra. The blue spectrum is from a, a clear fiber that has a very regular shape and habit. It's identified as polyethylene terephthalate, or PET. We also measured a blue fiber. In the field of view, you can see a blue fiber and a red fiber. They actually were the same material. In this case, we're showing the spectrum of the blue fiber, and that's cotton. Cotton is primarily cellulose, and it's a natural fiber. So microscopically, its habit is different. It's irregular. irregular but also you can see that the infrared absorption spectrum of the, the synthetic versus natural fiber are very, very different and can be di differentiated re uh, readily. So, to conclude, Surveyor provides per affordable performance yet very high microspectroscopy capabilities. We can identify small samples from various substrates and of various morphologies. The image quality and ease of use allows you to visualize and see your samples, document them easily and clearly. There's a lot of flexibility in the infrared spectroscopy. We can measure samples by reflection, ATR, either diamond or germanium, and transmission. The system is customer installable and can be used with very minimal training. At this point, I'd like to hand over the presentation to Matt Gunlock, who will conclude and ask some common, common customer questions. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Shearing, for sharing all of that information. We will wrap up our webinar in just a minute and get to those commonly asked customer questions. But I wanted to show you first that we are excited to include the surveyor as part of a larger microspectroscopy family. You can see on the slide here that we have a variety of different microspectroscopy techniques available. Some to accommodate larger samples in the 60 to 100 micron range in size, which is in line with the examples that Dr. Shearing had provided with the surveyor and others that accommodate smaller sample sizes, maybe in the one to 10 micron range, which involves some of our other microscopy products. Some of the products like the Surveyor Microspectroscopy System and the Nicolay IN5 Microscope are ideal for occasional identification of small particulate matter. Other systems that you see on the slide like the Continuum FTIR Microscope and the DXR2 Raman Microscope are used in laboratories around the world for more frequent and in-depth analysis. We also have our Nicolay IN10 microscope, which is a dedicated microscopy instrument, and our DXR2XI Raman imaging microscope. Both of those can be used to conduct high-speed chemical imaging of larger sample areas. So I just wanted to come on at the end and show you that no matter the sample size, complexity or frequency of your measurements, we certainly have the tools to help you solve those analytical challenges. 
We certainly encourage you to connect with Dr. Shearing and I. You can see I've listed our contact information at the top of this slide. And I've also provided several links that I think you might find useful. The first is to Zytec's website where you can find more information about Surveyor and their other products that they offer. And then I have a series of Thermo Fisher Scientific links below that, such as links to our FTIR product line, our spectroscopy products, a link to our YouTube channel, as well as our Spectroscopy Academy and on-demand webinars. I certainly want to encourage you to visit that FTIR Spectroscopy Academy where you'll find helpful videos, tips and tricks of how to conduct infrared analysis from basic videos to more advanced techniques. So with that, let's take a look at some common customer questions that we receive from individuals using Surveyor. So Dr. Shearing, if we take a common application like measuring thin layers of a material deposited on a substrate, are there ATR options other than diamond which may provide a different depth of penetration for that analysis? And maybe while you explain that, could you also just touch on what depth of penetration is and why that's important? Thank you, Matt, for that question. I'll answer the second part of the question first. What is depth of penetration? Depth of penetration corresponds to the path length that one measures with an ATR crystal reflection geometry. And the depth of penetration determines the depth of the absorption bands. Sometimes with high refractive index or carbon filled samples, it's best to have a shallower depth of penetration. The depth of penetration in ATR is a very simple consequence of the ratio of the refractive index of the sample to the ATR crystal. With a higher refractive index crystal, like germanium, you get a smaller depth of penetration that can be very useful for highly absorbing samples such as carbon filled rubbers or high refractive index samples. With diamond you have a larger depth of penetration which is optimum for most samples. On the Zytec surveyor system you can have either a germanium or diamond ATR crystal so that you measure the breadth of sample types corresponding to your problem. Great. So if a customer is looking to either use a different type of ATR crystal plate or they're looking to interchange those crystal plates, take them on and off, can you talk about how that's done on the Surveyor product? Switching crystal plates is very easy, easily accomplished by the user. First, the ATR crystals are mounted and permanently aligned in a stainless steel holder. This holder is located on the microscope using precision dowel pins and secured using two swivel latches. And can you talk a bit about the installation procedure? If a customer were to order and receive the surveyor, um, how would they go about installing it? Is, is it a complicated process? Is there a service call required? How does that work? Surveyor is a user installed accessory. It's permanently aligned. There is no alignment of optics by the user and no service call required for installation. Surveyor comes with a base plate specific to your spectrometer. In the case of the IS-5, it's an IS-5 base plate. We locate the surveyor in the sample compartment of the IS-5 which secures the base plate magnetically. We attach purge ears to isolate the optical path from the environment and attach a USB cable which communicates with surveyor from the computer. Great. So Along those same lines then of the simplified installation procedure, can you just talk about how 
the accessory is designed and how it's used. If someone's watching this webinar who maybe has never used a microspectroscopy uh, piece of equipment before, um, they're not as familiar with it, maybe they don't have that experience, how will they find the usability uh, and how will they find kind of the ergonomics of the design? Zytec addressed the design of Surveyor from the ground up to ensure that ergonomically it was an easy to use and pleasurable experience for users. First of all, the microscope interaction is has a very tactile feel and it's in front of the microscope and very accessible from an ergonomic perspective. The controls on Surveyor are virtually identical that you would find on a biological microscope used in a freshman high school biology class. We've minimized user interaction with Surveyor and has provided software control over some of the aspects of Surveyor operation like aperture settings, uh, reflect, re, reflection versus a transmission, infrared modes, and the illumination modes. Great, thank you. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have today for questions, but if you have an additional question for either Dr. Shearing or myself, please feel free to reach out to us via the contact information that's on your screen or visit one of the web resources that we've linked there as well. I want to once again thank Dr. Shearing for his time and for being my guest on the webinar today, and I especially want to thank all of you for tuning in and watching. Thanks and have a great rest of your day.